What's going on guys? George at the Ski Monster. I'm sitting here with Joe Riccio, our boot buyer here. And today we're gonna run through all of the 2024, 2025 mid-volume boots that we carry. Now, on paper, they're really all the same. They're all 100 millimeter lasts. And for the most part, all 130 flex boots with the exception of uh, this Fisher, which is a 140, and this K2, which is a 120. Um, Joe, where should we start? Let's start with the mock. Okay. Uh, this is a Technica mock 130 MV. And of these boots, as George had just mentioned, all 130, Fisher 140, K2 Recon 120. This is the most powerful and stiffest 130 flex that we carry. So for skiers that are out there looking to get the most out of their skis and like a stiff, responsive feel, this is generally what a lot of them end up in. It's a relatively easy boot to put on for a boot that is this stiff out on the hill. It really is easy. They co-mold the instep, slide right in, crank it down. You've got a cam style strap on a boot like this that you can really cinch the top down. I like to run mine a little bit tighter. When you flex into a boot like this, I measure like 267, 268. This is a 26.5. Of some of these boots out here, this is maybe one of the more precise fitting ones in length. And the Achilles, which a lot of people do feel in these boots when they're new, is where you notice like a decent pinch right on the back. So when you flex into a brand new boot before it's molded and broken in, you can feel a lot of that stuff. But in the, with the CAS liner that Technica did, those, that's really going to take shape um, around the Achilles and it will bake out. You just need to make sure that you're getting the liner hot enough in order for it to take shape. Um, another thing that's really cool on this Technica um, is if you look at the shell, everywhere where you see these dimples, these are the most commonly worked on parts of boots. And those dimples decrease the surface tension so we can stretch the boot further. And it also, by increasing the surface area uh, slightly more, um, we can stretch these boots a little more quickly than other, other boots. But this liner right here um, also has what Technica calls their CAS technology. This responds to heat, again, really, really well. And once this is baked up, if you felt like those toes were a little too aggressive in the front, once this is baked, your heel's gonna be able to settle further back into that pocket and you're gonna have a little more room up front, not to worry there. Um, another cool customization part of the Technica is if you look at this footboard in here, the Zeppa, um, there are some dimples in there that um, uh, guide the boot fitter so we can grind that down to make more room on top of your foot if you do need it. A lot of people, when they try on Technicas, when we, when we try on different boots during a boot fit, some of the first things people mentioned that George just talked about can be modified and fixed. We can often find solutions with just moving to another boot during that fit to show them what else is out there. Um, next boot that we have is the Solomon Supra Boa 130. So compared to the Technica, before we even throw it on, the reason why someone might want to move to that compared to a Technica, if that's the first boot we start in, is... It has a lot of the same fit features, but the liner is just a softer, more supple material. So you kind of immediately get into a more comfortable, in quotes, boot. Still an easy boot to put on, even with the boa on. And I know a lot of people talk about boas making boots difficult. But when you get in there, the first thing you notice is a lot of customers feel like they've stepped into a, in quotes, memory foam liner. It's just a softer material. So the toes, fit a bit more generously. There is more space across this instep area and the way it grabs the heel is just different. So when you flex into this guy and you get that heel seated into the back where the Technica focuses a lot on the way it pinches above the heel and on the Achilles, the Solomon has more of like an all encompassing squeeze down low on the heel. So a different way to grab the heel, not better, not worse, just different. And with the Boa Fit system, it does a lot of the same things buckles do, just in a different way. And, you know, a common complaint for people um, around the Achilles is when it's a little too dense here, just, just behind the ankle bone, like right in this more tender part of the foot, that squeeze can be a little intense. Moving to this, that is going to be much more forgiving in that same spot. Um, so you're, all these boots we're talking about, they're all moldable um, liners. Um, and when we get into the Solomon, 
we're getting into a custom shell. So these are shells that we can throw in an oven to manipulate. It doesn't just have to go through traditional boot fitting, which is where we're basically, if you have an issue, say, on your first metatarsal on the bunion, and we wanna stretch that out, um, it's going on hydraulic, we're heating it up with a heat gun, stretching it to the amount that we are looking for, and then letting it cool. Um, these, we can throw them in an oven and get quite a bit of movement out of these shells, which is um, a great option for people. And uh, the ability to adjust and customize is excellent in the Supra. And Giorgio, you're in the prime right now. Yeah. That boot does, has a lot of the same fit characteristics as the Technica and, and knowing your foot shape, it's a little bit more generous fitting through like the midfoot area back here. Length is about the same, but with a taller toe box, you can like physically pick your toes up and down a little bit yeah, more Yeah, you can freely. really feel like you're going like this. In that atomic. Toes. And then the, a lot of things that people notice in a prime compared to a Technica or some other boots out there is just how it's softer on the shins. It's a different shaped yeah. tongue. It's more of a U-shaped tongue that comes farther back against the shin. That's not, a pro or a con, it's more of a fit and feel thing, personal preference. The way it grabs the heel is, is quite similar to the Technica. That's one of the more difficult comparisons that we make in the store when we're, when we're trying on a Technica Mach 130 versus a Prime is not a whole lot of people can tell which is grabbing more effectively around that Achilles and heel area. Some people do notice in some atomic boots, a lot of pressure on, their, on the tips of their ankle bones when the boot is brand new. And most of that can be attributed to the liner and what Atomic does inside that liner. There's like a basically a plastic membrane that lives inside this liner that is designed to be molded. So when we heat up this outer portion and inner portion of the boot, you can see Atomic guesses where ankle bones kind of land, but when we mold that boot to someone's foot shape, these shift a little bit to be a little bit more anatomical. Honestly, I think this is the most, the Mimic Platinum liners from Atomic are the most badass ski boot liners going. Um, and if you really wanna get that magic out of the liner, as far as the customization goes, you just need to make sure that you're at a ski shop that can get the liners hot enough. Because the part of the boot that's really changing is that plastic material on the outside that Joe is talking about. That's the, that's the Mimic stuff. And as I'm holding it, I mean, you can feel that very thin plastic layer that is going to adjust all the nuances in your foot and grip that shell so you really feel you know, not just connected to your foot, but this whole unit feels very connected to you. Um, now, that's a custom shell. So is this one in the Prime. These are um, our favorite shells to uh, customize. Um, they bake really well. For people that are having a lot of issues on the inside of their foot with the navicular, ankle bone, maybe their feet are slightly flatter, this is a great option because we're gonna be able to get this plastic uh, to move enough. Another thing that we should mention about the Atomic boot is um, they have TrueFlex PU. Basically, there's another additive in this plastic that makes it so the flex is less affected by uh, temperature. So these boots are gonna stiffen up less in the cold than the last two boots that we just talked about. Really, all of these guys. Now, a downside with TrueFlex is since the boots are stiffer all the time, it can make them a little bit harder to get on, but Atomic did such a good job with these liners that it just takes a little bit of a push and you're right in. What I love about when we're out there testing Atomic boots, you know, switching out boots that are at the car at the end of the day, is these never get harder to take off. They're a dream. Um, when I'm in some of those, it's, uh, it's a bit of a battle. <laughs> I think something else I should mention about the, the Atomic boots is um, I've spent quite a bit of time in those Technica mocks and a complaint I do have with them when I'm out on the hill, especially if it's more of a spring day and we're getting some more Volkswagen size moguls, when I get a little bit tired, that boot is a little bit more blocky so I can feel it a little more on my shin. The um, flex the progressiveness of the atomic is so smooth like i don't i have never had one shin complaint in these boots and they drive skis really well not as powerful as that technica um but really great boot smooth where are we going next 
Let's put the Fisher on. Good luck. So what a lot of people realize with this Fisher boot, it's a 140 flex on paper, the RC4 MV Pro. It doesn't ski quite as powerfully as the Mach, and in our opinion, as the Prime. It doesn't feel quite as smooth, doesn't feel quite as stable. And then you also have a zip fit liner in this boot. So the first thing that people notice if they're gonna step into the boot normally without taking the liner out is that you're gonna be fighting quite a bit of material and the neoprene that's in here doesn't make it the easiest boot to put on if you're gonna step in this way. What some people do to counteract some of that difficulty, it's kind of like another difficult way of putting a boot on is you start with just the liner. You'd slide this guy on your foot, cinch everything up, and then just step into the shell. There are boot horns that make this easier. I don't have one on me. And that can make it just so that you're jamming your foot in. It's a little bit more of an aggressive way to get into the boot. Not everyone wants to pull the liner out, but makes it just a different way to get into a harder boot to put on. Some of the things that you notice, or a lot of people notice when they get into this fissure is something needs to be worked on before the boot feels more even fitting. So with the material in that zip fit, it is heated a little bit differently. It's heated at a lower temperature than some of the other liners. The shells on this boot are not bakeable. So the modification out of the box does require more hands-on work. Mm -hmm. But when you flex into the boot, the first thing that people feel is that there's like dimples of pressure in the heel where some of that material in the zip fit has settled just from being in the box for so long. And then also, this is like one of the most generous fitting boots in length. This is a 26.5. These are all 26.5s. And with that material on the end of the liner, it feels so much more generous fitting. The reason for that, if you can kind of see, is there's not a whole lot of rigidity in the toes here. So I can really flex all of this, which gives that feeling of length. And to like, just put another liner on next to them. Like when I go to move toes, like it's not, the same as that guy. This is so much looser up here. It feels good. <laughs> good. <laughs> and if you looked at how Joe just took that boot off, um, that is going to be the easiest way to take these boots off, especially after you've skied and there's a little bit of moisture in the liner. No need to battle trying to keep your, get your foot out of the liner and shell. Just take the shell off and you're gonna save yourself a lot of stress. Smoother sailing. George, why don't you put on that shadow? Shadow. So the, the shadow boot, this is what? It's second season? Second season. The, some of the, the liner features and fit features that people feel out of the box, it does have like that softer feel, similar to the Fisher, um, but the toe box is more rigid. A lot of people in almost all Lang boots feel pressure, more pressure than some other boots on the inside of their big toe and then outside of the pinky toe out of the box because of that more dense feel in the liner construction, but similar to that super boot, it does have like that softer, more supple feel. You had started to mention, George, like the shin feeling boots. I remember when we were testing these out in Utah, the only thing you talked about was how warm they are. They're very how, warm boots. And how your shins felt amazing all day. Yeah, and you know, in comparison to those mocks, which was my baseline, you know, for um, uh, two years ago, um, uh, those, again, a little bit tougher on the shins. These are great. Um, people that are pounding bumps, blasting through crud, that have more sensitive shins or don't want to deal with that complaint anymore, uh, you're not going to. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the whole, you know, they're easy to put on, but I've never liked taking these boots off. This is another boot where it's easier to just take off the shell. I get a little too much boot bite right here. And the reason for that is like you can see as I'm taking this off, how this is kind of collapsing right there. Yep. That's where your foot gets stuck, which makes this a little bit harder of a boot to take off. Um, I think the other thing worth mentioning is there's a lot of like preconceptions out there that Langs are the Langs that they were building 20 years ago. This is not much like that boot. Those no. boots, the, the days of Lang Bang, you can kind of take that out of your vocabulary if you're looking for a shadow. It's, it's soft on the shins, 
it's not the most uncomfortable boot to be in. It still skis like you'd expect a Lang to ski, but more forgiving. Not as powerful as the Mach or the Prime and, and arguably the Supra, but it's, it's a great boot if you like something more comfortable. You don't need to be afraid of Langs anymore. No, and this is gonna be one of the more generous uh, fitting boots width-wise back here of all the MVs that we're talking about. A um, little bit snugger up here, like Jill mentioned. This is um, one of the shorter toe boxes. So when you per first put your foot in here in comparison to all these other things, you are gonna notice your toes more at the end. Um, now, part of the reason these are gonna be a little bit more forgiving on the shin, um, this is actually an idea that Lang got from Technica. If we look at the back of that uh, mock right here, this T-Drive, um, Lang really just took that idea and rebuilt it from the ground up, built a whole shell around this. So in the Technica, we have pressure sp spread out over this much distance. In a lot of boots, it's just between these two bolts. So Technica spread that out. Lang spread that out even more from here to here, giving that boot a very progressive and smooth feel. You have a very smooth feeling throttle um, that uh, is so much easier on the shins. And one thing that's really helpful for skiers that um, um, aren't skiing quite as aggressively or having more issues getting forward, they can get the tips of the skis to initiate a little more easily because of how much power is delivered uh, to the skis without much shin angle. Yeah, makes skiing easier. Makes skiing easier. The next boot that we'll talk about is the Nordica Speed Machine 130 BOA. Um, it has a lot of the same fit characteristics as the Technica, but with a softer liner throughout. The, the length is more generous. The Achilles isn't quite as firm. Uh, it's just as precise across the instep, and it's maybe even more precise across the instep. This is one of the easiest 130 boots to put on. You don't really fight much getting in there. The plastic that's in this boot flexes soft in the store, flexes even quite a bit out in the cold. So, you know, no, no real right or wrong there. I think what we've kind of felt skiing in these is you ski them differently than you do a lot of boots. Where, you know, even talking with some of the other boot developers, it feels like one of those boots you flex into and just keep that pressure forward and roll your ankles more to drive skis as opposed to throttling. It's a more lateral out. feeling boot. Yeah, stiff laterally for sure. A little bit softer flexing this way. Similar to what we were talking about in the mock boot, this Achilles pinch for some people that are a little bit more sensitive in this area, they do feel that out of the box. It does go away when that liner gets baked. And then the length for these boots is soft doesn't feel like your toes are really jammed up into the end. Now, another thing in comparison to the Mach MV is this uh, shell is gonna grab your calf a bit more. So while the fit is uh, similar, um, if you feel like the Mach is a little bit too roomy up here, we're gonna have a more precise fit on the calf here. Or if this was okay, but we need a little more room on the leg, you should check out the Mach. Just make sure you take the spoiler out of the back. You want to try on a recon? Yeah. So that is the K2 Recon 120. It's probably the lightest boot out of the bunch that we're talking about. Yep. Thinner walled plastic, thin liner, cushy. Um, this is a boot that a lot of people that are maybe between volumes, unsure what volume makes the most sense for them, they end up in this relatively frequently. This has a lot of the same fit characteristics that you'd see in higher volume fits. It's generous through the midfoot. This boot's huge. Length is soft on the toes. You've got that vertical toe space. It's not the most generous fitting across the instep, so more true to a real mid volume boot. And then there's not a whole lot of pressure in that heel area on the tips of the ankle bones or even around the back of the Achilles. So again, like more of a, call it a comfort oriented fit and liner. Yeah, boy, it's, it's, this feels so much like a 102 millimeter lasted boot. Yeah. Definitely the widest. Okay, so to sum up here, the stiffest, most powerful feeling bunch of the mid volumes is going to be the Mach 130. 
if you're looking for the most powerful, stiffest feel, this is going to be it. On the other end of the spectrum um, is going to be the Recon. Now I know this is the 120, but even if we had the 130, this is going to be the softest 130 uh, of the bunch. Um, those numbers, they're, they're not standardized, they're more marketing numbers, um, but these are very different flexing boots. This is significantly more powerful. This is going to flex um, just a smidge softer than um, it's a boot in a different class that we're you know, a lower volume fit, but this is gonna be more similar to an Atomic Resder CS130 or a Head Raptor. This is, that's a real deal boot. And as far as like fit goes, it's, it's similar to like buying a pair of shoes. You could buy the same size shoe, you know you're a size nine, but Nikes fit differently from Reeboks, fit differently from New Balances. The Fisher boots are the most generous fitting in length. The Langs probably feel the shortest in length, followed by a Technica, and then Recons, Speed Machines, again on the more generous side of the spectrum, Supra on the more generous side of the spectrum, and then Atomic back to like that more true to size and length feel. As far as width goes, they're close. They're not, they're, they're definitely different though. The, the mock is the most precise fitting in width. That Atomic is tighter in certain areas. It's more narrow through here, but a little bit softer through the yeah. midfoot area, still firm in the heel. The Supra is most generous throughout the middle speed machine, similar to that Supra, soft in the midfoot, tight in the heel, and then this Fisher and the Recon and the Shadow are right in line with one another as far as generosity through midfoot and width. Now, how about instep? Where What's going to be the snuggest on the instep or most forgiving? Speed machine is going to be snuggest on the instep. You know, even with the BOA fit system that people are talking about, you can fit a higher instep foot in there. It doesn't come down to what's closing the boot. It's the shape of the boot that is the most precise across the instep. Most generous is going to be that Lang shadow. It's soft across that instep. There's a little bit of room on top of the foot there. So people with higher insteps or even higher arches and foot shapes that have like that bone up top you can get a lot of those foot shapes into that Lang with no issues. If you have a really high instep, you probably shouldn't be in a speed machine. Now, um, another issue with fit is people's calves. What is going to be more forgiving? What is gonna be snug around the calf? The Atomic is the most forgiving across the calf. You can even see on these boots new for this season on the Prime, they had had this in some of their higher volume fits, but they included this cuff spoiler. So when you pull this guy out of these atomics, you essentially take a 26.5 cuff with this guy in and it turns it into a 27. So the ability to fit larger or more athletic calves is the easiest on the atomic. If you have really big calves or bigger calves, this Supra is the most precise fitting. I obviously don't have big calves. Even this for me in their Supra or even their lower volume alpha, can sometimes feel like it's squeezing too much right where the muscle lives. All right, how about um, warmth, Joe? Like of all these boots, what's what's the warmest, what's the coldest? Yeah, I mean, they're all ski boots, so they're, they're definitely not designed to be warm, but having skied in that Lang boot, that is by far the warmest boot I've skied in, in a really long time. And then that Technica mock boot is cold. There's a lack of weather stripping, that liner being a little bit more of a aggressive material. There's no real insulation in that boot. It's cold. So um, having spent a lot of time in this boot, and Joe is 100% correct, they're chilly. Um, this is a boot where you're going to experience more coldness or snow making its way in if you open these buckles. Like the issue is, is once you pop the buckles right here, so much air and snow makes its way in here. So if you have these boots and you're complaining about that, really get these buckles dialed in and just figure out how to keep them closed and you're figuring to be way warmer. But and add it, heat. And add heat. I mean, I have heat in my boots, so do you. I mean, it's Fantastic. a game changer. Um, how about as far as customization, what are, I mean, you do so much of the custom boot work yeah. here. What are your favorite boots to work on? Uh, my favorite boots to work on are boots that we don't see come back that often, and that's the Atomic. With the ability to bake that shell and mold that liner right out of the box, we, we see very few Atomics come back in for any sort of real customization work. Um, they're all relatively easy to work on. Manufacturers have realized that ski boots are weird, feet are weird, and we need to be able to get all sorts of different foot shapes into boots. The Technica with the dimpled out areas make it easy when someone comes in and they're like, hey, 
fifth met, navicular bone here, ankle bones. You know exactly where they live on the boot. A lot of people, when they're talking about where things hurt in ski boots, can't really tell where they are on their foot. So if they come in talking about ankle bone, but they're pointing up here, this is obviously not where your ankle bone lives. So I know that we need to just stretch down here. Um, everything else is relatively easy to work on. You know, Recon Supra with the bakeable shells, that helps to mitigate some of the boot work that we end up doing. The most difficult boot to work on is this guy. There's, there's no sort of highlighting of typical problematic areas on people's feet. The shell is thick. The liner is not designed for really any sort of stretching or customization, unlike a lot of the other stuff that's out there right now. So when it comes to shopping for ski boots, obviously the best way to figure out what's going on is to find a boot fitter that listens to your priorities and, and you know relay your priorities. It's okay to be relatively picky when it comes to fitting boots. You don't want to just try one on, walk away and have a nice day. That's it's a good way to end up in a boot that we need to work on pretty often. Um, we don't, we know how well these boots fit and ski because we've skied in them. We've tried them on, but it's not just that. I know last season I did around 1,012 boot fits um, and then a handful more, including custom boot work and whatnot. So we talk to people every day. Each one of those boot fits is kind of like a small focus group. We learn so much about where the boots fit differently, how these liners change and react over time when we see boots come back in for boot work. But you know, when it comes to making sure you end up in a good fit, you want as uniform a fit as possible, secure heels, and just make sure that whoever you end up working with is listening and you're relaying any sort of information that, whether it's good or bad, to that fitter. Any questions, book an appointment with us here in Boston, shoot an email, or drop any question you have in the comments. We're here to help, and uh, hope to see you soon.